Pokemon Violet offered a glimpse at what lies on the horizon with futuristic paradoxes and fresh takes on the formula. But what slick new species could be considered the best? Well, let's not waste another second and take a look at what Paldia has to offer. Starters feel like a sensible place to kick this off, and I believe Quaquaval fits the bill with their spirited dances giving them a distinct flair and their signature aqua step making them unstoppable speed demons on the battlefield. Unlike starters from previous generations, Quaquaval adds fighting as their secondary type instead of letting their fire-based contemporary claim it again and it's a breath of fresh air. They put it to good use, too. Those decorative water feathers, for example, aren't just for show. They can slice up the opposition with grace and pizzazz. Paired with their kicks that can send trucks rolling, you'd have a tough time finding a fighter more fierce. Quaquaval isn't the only Paldean Pokémon known for their kicks, though. As a grasshopper, Low Kicks has an extra set of legs, and by unfolding them and entering showdown mode, they can deliver powerful blows in short order. Those appendages must be deployed sparingly, though, because whipping them out for battle puts significant strain on their bodies. As their slick palette might suggest, they're the first dark bug monsters to be discovered, too. So while they only stand three feet tall, they can axe kick like nobody's business. Let me tell you folks, these sinister grasshoppers truly shine with the best of them. Ran rolling right along, I'd say that if Starfall Street taught us anything, it's that with the right customizations, Rim Vroom know how to put on a show. Without the Starmobile forms devised by Otega though, they still pack plenty of combat potential. They can spin out to slow the opposition down, and some of them are equipped with hidden filters that can reduce the damage of super effective hits by a whopping 25%. River Room definitely look like possessed inanimate objects, and boast characteristics befitting a ghost types like sticking out their tongues to sprinkle folks with poison, but they're simply steel engines with a toxic streak. Sometimes looks can be deceiving. Houndstone, on the other hand, delivers ghostly energy exactly as advertised. They evolve from Grievard at night, and can convincingly conceal themselves underground with their little tombstone protuberance, which is beneficial since they spend most of their time sleeping in graveyards. Some Houndstone are deceptively fluffy and susceptible to fire as a result, while others are capable of doubling their speed in sandstorms, so there's a lot of versatility in what they can handle. These ghosts are also known to be the most loyal amongst dog Pokémon, so if nothing else, they're at least worthy of your last respects. I think respect is due for Tatsugiri, too. Although they look like simple small fries with their colorful curly, droopy, and stretchy forms, they're actually one of the most intelligent dragon Pokémon and are commanders at heart, leading Don Dozo in the battle and providing palette-based boosts through Order Up. Some of them are adept at drawing in water through their Storm Drain ability as well, making them more than just catfish wranglers, and they've adapted their hues as a means of luring in their prey. Tatsugiri recognize their weak on their own, but they play dead and leverage collaboration to best their opponents in battle. That's pretty novel and new. You know what else is novel and new, though? The concept of convergent evolution where Pokémon with no direct relation look a lot like another species, and I'd be willing to claim that Toad's Cruel is definitely the cream of the crop in that department. Striking a resemblance to the water poison Tentacruel of Kanto fame, Toad's Cruel is a ground grass woodier Pokémon and are known to dwell in reclusive groups deep within forests. They have a mighty ability that ensures status moves land regardless of any safeguards at the cost of moving last, and they use their tentacles to wrap around prey and drain them of their nutrients, which is a process that's as painful as you'd presume. Unlike their poison counterparts though, these species are safe for consumption. In particular, it's said that the folds along the rims of their heads are a popular delicacy. In terms of direct evolutions from familiar faces though, King Gambit is a tough one to top. Rising the power by defeating fellow Bisharp holding leader's crests, they boast majestic mustaches, hair that's long enough to serve as a seat, and a sword horn that captures the overbearing gravitas of a conqueror. King Gambit's Supreme Overlord ability allows them to boost their power based on their fallen allies, and they've been known to feign nobility in combat through their signature Kowtow Cleave, where they never miss their mark. Despite their renown and authority to command colonies of their lower ranks, they aren't particularly effective at devising complex strategies, but that's certainly not enough to disqualify them from being considered one of the best. Of course, you can't talk about Paldia's finest without shining a spotlight on the Zero of Pokémon, Master Maverick Hunter Surreal Edge. Created by handing malicious armor made from Sinistee chips to a Charcadet, this ghostly warrior can deliver sinister strikes with their arm blades like a dual-wielding Zacian. Their signature Bitter Blade can also sap the health of whoever is struck by it. While some of their armor might be weak, you can always count on Surreal Edge to whip up wisps of fire in a flash. There's definitely no shortage of cool designs in the modern day, but if we dive deep into the canonical future, I think you'll concur that there's plenty more in store. And there's no better creature to kick off those acknowledgements than the Iron Serpent themselves, Maridon. Unlike the other Paradox Pokémon that share Quark Drives, this Cyber Eye Cyclozar has an advanced Hydron engine that renders the surrounding area electrified like a veritable Tapu Koko. Maridon also boasts a myriad of modes that correlate with their technological abilities, ranging from driving, surfing, and gliding all the way to the battle-based Ultimate Mode. I'd also be remiss not to mention how nifty it is to see their wheels put into practice compared to their underdeveloped ancestors. 
Iron Valiant is another strong contender from a time yet to come, blending Gardevoir and Gallade into the ultimate fairy fighting machine. Allegedly, the creature was intended to be created as the most powerful psychic Pokemon, but it took on the opposite types of their foundational forms. Their elegance and chivalry was also lost in the development of this paradoxical product, as Iron Valiant is described as cold and cruel with a willingness to cut down anyone without hesitation. The magenta blades on their gauntlets can be detached to create a dual-bladed staff, too, which makes them all the more threatening. Iron Moth might not come across as aggressively, but there's theories abound when it comes to their origins. Folks believe it might be a UFO sent down for monitoring purposes, while others take the speculation further and suggest it might be performing surveillance leading up to an invasion of some kind. It certainly looks like the successor to Volcarona with their figure and solar panel wings, but this paradox doesn't share the bug type with them and instead embraces poison. Whatever their purpose might be, it's best to stay low to the ground and just avoid detection anyway. Speaking of ground, I'd be remiss not to mention Iron Treads, which I dare say is the definitive Dawn fan. Having an aerodynamic frame and just being rounder in general is already better, but the fact Iron Treads have foldable ears, compressible legs, and more digitized facial features gives this rendition much more Iron Will than their ancestors. As the only Paradox Pokémon to escape Area Zero and be designated a Titan, they're also a real force to be reckoned with, too. How a flightless monster managed to breach that crater is an astounding feat and certainly worthy of recognition. But that's just my opinion on these Violet Virtuosos. Paldia has no shortage of splendid designs, so consider me keen to hear your thoughts. Did I name off a handful of your favorites, or did I overlook some essential picks from your party? I'm curious to see how much overlap we might have, so head on down to the comments and let's have ourselves a discussion. Hey there, pal. Thanks for watching. I don't know about you, but I feel like Pokemon Violet knocked it out of the park with all the new species they added to the Pokedex. I'll tell you, it was an easy generation to build out a team of newcomers, but like I said, I want to know your thoughts, so be sure to share them. And since you watched this video, uh, don't watch my Scarlet one. You've picked your version and now you gotta commit.